Horseman Pat, Horseman Pat, Horseman Pat on his black and white cat. Meow. That's Jess. <laughs> Hi everyone, how you doing? Welcome to Storytime Live. It's 6.30 GMT, GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, which means it's time for another edition of Storytime Live, uh, where we read a book every single night. Now you've been donating these books to me. This is another donation from Gabby, so thank you very much to you guys. Uh, for this one. Um, looking forward to reading it once again by the fire. Um, we read it once if we're lucky enough and we scream one more time, one more time. Uh, we read it again and then you can do what you like. You can go for dinner, you can uh, finish whatever you're up to, but this is a break for the adults. So all the kids gather around, um, sit in front of your computer, your tablet, uh, your iPhone, whatever you're watching on and, uh, and enjoy this story with me, whatever the time of the day. Um, you can watch it live with me here at 6.30 or you can click and play whenever you like. We've got a huge range of stories for you to choose from. Um, almost 40. It's day 41 for me in lockdown. And I think uh, day 37 of Storytime Live. And tonight, as you heard there, it is Pack. Postman Pack. And we're going to dedicate this one to Leo, who is watching all the way over in North Carolina. So if your name's Leo and your mum is called Anna and your dad is called Jacob, then this is for you, Leo. USA! 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 Hope you're doing well over there in North Carolina. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, this is called Pat and the Puzzle Parsons. Um, so I hope you enjoy this one. Here we go. Um, I love Postman Pat. Uh, there was a very strange parcel on Saturday. It's for the Reverend Timms, said Mrs. Goggins. It looks like a frying pan, said Pat. I do think it looks like, yeah, maybe a frying pan. Pat called at the church with the parcel and the Reverend Timms was out. Miss Hubbard was there seeing to the flowers. Leave it with me, said Miss Hubbard. I'll see that he gets it. Do you think it's a frying pan, said Pat. Yeah, it could be, said Mrs Hubbard. He likes making pancakes. The Reverend Timms opened his parcel on Sunday after the service. Hmm. Do you think it's a, a frying pan? Well, he does like making pancakes. There he is, opening it up. What's it going to be? Have a guess. <laughs> it wasn't a frying pan at all. It was a banjo. When I've, <laughs> when I've tuned it up, I'll give you a song, said the Reverend Timms. He sang Old Man River and everyone sang the chorus. Then he had to sing all the old songs. Oh, we didn't know that you could play, said Pat. Oh, I used to play when I was a young man, said the Reverend Timms, a long time ago. <laughs> there he is. Old Man River, ready boy, whoa, sing about song, eh? I'm a reverend playing my banjo, and no, it's not a frying pan. <laughs> there was another strange parcel on Monday. It looks like another banjo, said Pat. Hmm, it's for Miss Hubbard, said Mrs Goggins. Surely she doesn't play the banjo as well, said Pat. Well, we'll soon have a banjo band at this rate. Pat called on Miss Hubbard with her parcel. There's a banjo for you, said Pat. Oh, I hope not, said Miss Hubbard. I can't play for toffee. Not a banjo, anyway. <laughs> There's Mrs Goggins. Yeah, it looks like another banjo. There it is. There you go, Miss Hubbard. Another banjo? Miss Hubbard opened her parcel. It wasn't a banjo after all. It was a tennis racket. Oh, good, said Miss Hubbard. Now I can get into practice for the Pencaster tournament. There she is. Tennis racket, not a banjo. <laughs> and not a frying pan. Tennis racket, of course. There was another strange parcel on Tuesday. It looks like another tennis racket, said Pat. It's for Granny Dryden, said Mrs Goggins. Does she play tennis, said Pat? Well, she did when she was a girl, 
said Mrs. Boggins. Huh. Looks just like another tennis racket. Pat called on Granny Dryden with her parcel. There's a tennis racket for you, said Pat. A what? said Granny Dryden, turning up her hearing aid. A tennis racket, said Pat, loudly. Good gracious, said Granny Dryden. I couldn't play tennis now. My old bones are far too stiff. Granny Dryden opened the parcel. Looks like a tennis racket. I said it looks like a tennis racket. <laughs> there she is opening it up. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? It wasn't a tennis racket at all. It was a warming pan. Whatever's that, said Pat. It's to make the bed warm in the winter, said Granny Dryden. I use an electric blanket, said Pat. I like the old fashioned ways, said Granny Dryden. She is with a heating pan. Could be a tennis racket. Could be a banjo. They all look the same. There was another strange parcel on Wednesday. It looks like another warming pan, said Pat. It's for Dorothy Thompson, said Mrs. Boggins. She's already, uh, she already has a warming pan hung up on the wall, said Pat. Hmm, she says it's an antique. What does she want with another, said Mrs. Boggins. <laughs> it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. <laughs> Pat called on Dorothy Thompson with her parcel. Uh, there's a warming pan for you today, said Pat. I hope not, said Dorothy Thompson. I have already got one. It used to be my granddad's. Uh, just look at it. I've been trying to get rid of it for years. Uh, there it is on the wall. Warming pan. Another warming pan, is it? Dorothy Thompson opened her parcel. There she is opening it. What's it going to be? It wasn't a warming pan at all. It was a carpet beater. Whatever's that for? said Pat. Come outside and I'll show you, said Dorothy Thompson. There was a dusty carpet hanging on the line and Dorothy began to whack the carpet with the beater and clouds of dust came out of it. A tissue, said Pat. <laughs> uh, we use a vacuum cleaner. There's nothing like a good beater, said Dorothy. Gets you nice and warm on a winter's day. <laughs> Look at all the dust coming up. <laughs> Sorry, it's all the dust. There was another strange parcel on Thursday. It looks like another carpet beater, said Pat. It's for Ted Glenn, said Mrs Goggins. I don't know what he wants with a carpet beater, said Pat. He's one of these vacuums that even sucks up water. Yeah. Look, different wrapping, but definitely looks like a carpet beater. Or a banjo, or a frying pan, or a, uh, a warming pan. What's it going to be? Pat called on Ted with his parcel. Uh, there's a carpet beater for you today, said Pat. Bless me, said Ted. What would I want with a carpet beater? I have one of these vacuums. Uh, I know, said Pat. I was telling Mrs Goggins. Ted opened his parcel. Hmm. I wonder what it's going to be. Come on, Ted, open it up. It wasn't a carpet beater at all. It was a landing net. Ah. That's for when I go fishing, said Ted. For getting the big ones out of the water. Ah, caught myself a big one. Blah, 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 said the fish. There was another strange parcel on Friday. It looks like another landing net, said Pat. Oh, it's for the school, said Mrs Goggins. Whatever do they want with a landing net, said Pat. But it looks just like a landing net, doesn't it? Pat called at the school with the parcel and Mr Pringle was just calling the register. Here's a landing net for you, said Pat. A what? said Mr Pringle. Uh, we're not doing any projects on fishing as far as I know. Uh, listen, children, has anyone sent for a landing net? But no one had. Mr Pringle opened the parcel. 
Anyone? Landing net? Well, we'll have a look and see then, won't we? It wasn't a landing net at all. It was a trundle wheel. Whatever's that? said Pat. Uh, please, Mr Pringle, can I tell him? said Tom Pottage. Certainly, Tom, said Mr Pringle. Uh, see, Pat, um, said Tom, you wheel it along like this and every time it goes click, it's gone a metre. So you can measure how big things are. I use a piece of string, said Pat. Uh, what if your string isn't long enough, said Tom. Mm, tie a bit more on, said Pat. <laughs> Cheerio. There he is with his string. <laughs> and there is Tom with the measuring meter. You've guessed it. There's another strange parcel on Saturday. It looks like another trundle wheel, said Pat. It's for George Lancaster, uh, said Mrs Goggins. What would he want with a trundle wheel? Pat called on George with his parcel. There's a trundle wheel here for you today, said Pat. Good heavens, said George. Whatever's that? It doesn't sound much use to me. George opened his parcel. Scissors out. It does look like a trundle wheel. It wasn't a trundle wheel at all. It was a frying pan. That's what we started with, said Pat. What? said George. Oh, it's a long story, said Pat. I'll not bother with it just yet for you. Uh, well, this is a grand frying pan, said George. Just the job. I must try it out. Uh, would you like a spot of bacon, Pat? Uh, thanks, said Pat. Lovely jubbly. Mm. Hello. A frying pan for the bacon. It's exactly what they thought it was going to be to start with. <clears throat> there were no more strange parcels for a long time after that. The end. <laughs> Just... Normal delivery as usual. Well done, Postman Pat. And that was Pat on the Puzzle Parcels. Did you enjoy that? That was good, wasn't it? Well, I tell you what, we should read it again, shouldn't we? Do you remember what you have to say? One more time. Are you ready? OK, here we go. All together now. One, two, three. One more time. One more time. One more time. Are you doing it? One more time. Are you? One more time. One more time. Can't hear you. One more time. One more. I can hear you now. No, I can hear you. Yeah. No, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. All right. Okay. I can hear you. Ooh. One more time it is then. <clears throat> we'll have to read it again then, won't we? Woo! <laughs> oh, are they the same stripy socks that you had on yesterday? I'll tell you a secret. The slippers are in the wash. Do you know why? They smell of cheese. Maybe I could write a book about Uncle Apsley's smelly slippers that smelt of cheese. So anyway, they're in the wash and that's why I've got the stripy socks on. Where were we? We'll have to read it again then, won't we? Woo! OK, here we go. Pat and the puzzle parcels. Are you ready? <clears throat> Take two. See if you can remember what happened. There was a very strange parcel on Saturday. It's for the Reverend Tims, said Mrs Goggins. It looks like a frying pan, said Pat. Hmm. It does look like a frying pan, Granny Goggins. Pat called at the church with the parcel. The Reverend Tims was out. Miss Hubbard was there seeing to the flowers. Oh, leave it with me, said Miss Hubbard. I'll see that he gets it. Do you think it's a frying pan, said Pat. Oh, could be, said Mrs Hubbard. He does like making pancakes. <laughs> yeah, it does look like a frying pan. The Reverend Tims opened his parcel on Sunday after the service. Ooh, look. It wasn't a frying pan at all. It 
was a banjo. When I've tuned it up, I'll give you a little song, said the Reverend Tims. He sang Old Man River and then everyone joined in to sing the chorus. And then he had to sing all the old songs. Oh, we didn't know you could play, said Pat. Well, I used to play when I was a young man, said the Reverend Tims. Oh, a long time ago. Oh, Old Man River. I don't know the actual words of Old Man River, but let's just say I do. Oh, well done, Reverend. Well done. <laughs> There was another strange parcel on Monday. It looks like another parcel, and it looks like another banjo, said Pat. <laughs> it's for Miss Hubbard, said Mrs Goggins. Uh, surely she doesn't play the banjo as well, said Pat. Well, we'll soon have a banjo band at this rate. A banjo band. Pat called on Miss Hubbard with her parcel. Uh, there's a banjo here for you, said Pat. Oh, I hope not, said Miss Hubbard. I can't play for Toffee. Not a banjo, anyway. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how she speaks, but she does now. Oh, I do hope it's not a banjo. A banjo? Miss Hubbard opened her parcel. It wasn't banjo at all. It was a tennis racket. Oh, good! said Miss Hubbard. Now I can get into practice for the Pencaster Tournament. Ooh, here we go. I made quite a racket, quite a racket. There was another strange parcel on Tuesday. It looks like another tennis racket, said Pat. It's for Granny Dryden, said Mrs Goggins. Well, does she play tennis, said Pat. Well, she did when she was a little girl said Mrs Goggins. Hmm, another tennis racket. Pat called at Granny Dryden with her parcel. Uh, there's a tennis racket for you, said Pat. Oh, what, dear? said Granny Dryden, turning up her hearing aid. A tennis racket, said Pat, loudly. Oh, good gracious, said Granny Dryden. I couldn't play tennis now. My old bones are far too stiff. Granny Dryden opened her parcel. My dry bones, no a tennis racket. No, look at me, dear, I'm too old. I can't play tennis. I couldn't possibly. <laughs> it wasn't a tennis racket at all. It was a warming pan. Whatever's that? said Pat. It's to make your bed warm in the winter, said Granny Dryden. Oh, I use an electric blanket, said Pat. I like the old fashioned ways, said Granny Dryden. Mm, you stick to your electric blanket, Pat, and I'll enjoy my frying pan shaped bedpan. <laughs> there was another strange parcel on Wednesday. It looks like another warming pan, said Pat. It's for Dorothy Thompson, said Mrs Goggins. She already has a warming pan. It's hung up on a wall, said Pat. She says it's an antique. What does she want with another, said Granny Goggins. Pat called on Dorothy Thompson with her parcel. Oh, there's, a warming pas <laughs> there's a warming pan for you here today, said Pat. Oh, I hope not said Dorothy Thompson. <laughs> uh, I've already got one. Uh, it used to be Grandad's. Just look at it. I've been trying to get rid of it for years. Oh, here it is on the wall. Mm. Oh, and now I've got two of them. Why would, why would I want two? Dorothy Thompson opened her parcel. It wasn't a warming pan at all. It was a carpet beater. Whatever's that for? said Pat. Oh, well, come outside and I'll show you, said Dorothy Thompson. There was a dusty carpet hanging on the line and Dorothy began to whack the carpet with the beater and clouds of dust came off it. 
<laughs> said Pat. We use a vacuum cleaner. Oh, there's nothing like a good beater, said Dorothy. Gets you nice and warm on a winter's day. <laughs> nice little beating for the first day. It looks like another carpet beater. <laughs> a carpet beater, not a carpet beater. A carpet beater, said Pat. It's for Ted Glenn, said Mrs Goggins. Uh, I don't know why he wants a carpet beater, said Pat. He has one of those vacuums that even sucks water up. Yeah, it does. It looks like a carpet beater, that's for sure. Pat called on Ted with his parcel. There's a carpet beater for you here today, Pat, yeah, said Pat. <laughs> Bless me, said Ted. What would I want with a carpet beater? I have one of these vacuums. I oh, know, said Pat. I was telling Granny Goggins, and Ted opened his parcel. There it is. Oh, I've got one of those vacuums. Why, why would I want a carpet beater? It wasn't a carpet beater at all. It was a landing net. Yeah, that's for when I go fishing, said Ted. For getting the, uh, the big ones. <sighs> there was another strange parcel on Friday. And it looks, you guessed it, like a landing net, said Pat. It's for the school, said Granny Goggins. I don't know why I'm calling her Granny Goggins. It's Mrs Goggins, but she does look like an old granny. Whatever do they want with a landing net, said Pat. It's Granny Goggins. It's a landing net. Folks from Pat and Jess the cat. called at the school with the parcel. Mr Pringle was just calling the register. Uh, here's a landing net for you, said Pat. Uh, a what? said Mr Pringle. Uh, we're not doing any projects on fishing as far as I know. Uh, listen children, has anyone sent for a landing net? But no one had. Mr Pringle opened his parcel. Uh, no one? No one's ordered a landing net? It wasn't a landing net at all. It was a trundle wheel. Whatever's that? said Pat. Oh, please, Mr Pringle, can I tell him? said Tom Pottage. Uh, certainly, Tom, said Mr Pringle. Uh, see, Pat, said Tom, you wheel it along like this, and every time it goes click, it's got a metre. So, you can measure how big things are. I use a piece of string, said Pat. What if your string isn't long enough, said Tom. Mm, tie a bit more on, said Pat. Cheerio! <laughs> yes, there's the, uh, the metre. The trundle wheel. Click, one metre. Click, two metres. Click, three metres. Click, four metres. Click. Five metres, click, six metres. You get the idea. <laughs> there was another strange parcel on Saturday. Isn't that funny, old week? <laughs> it looks like another trundle wheel, said Pat. It's for George Lancaster, said Mrs Goggins. Whatever would he want with a trundle wheel, said Pat. Pat called on George with his parcel. Uh, there's a trundle wheel here for you today, said Pat. Good heavens, said George. Whatever is that? Uh, it doesn't sound much use to me. George opened his parcel. Ah, it's going to be a banjo. What do you think it's going to be? It wasn't a trundle wheel. And it wasn't a banjo. It was a frying pan. Oh! That's where we started. That's what we started with, said Pat. <laughs> That's what we started with. What? said George. Oh, it's a long story, said Pat. I'll not bother it. <laughs> I'll not bother you with it now. <laughs> Gotta nail that line. Uh, I'll not bother you with it just now, said Pat. It's a long story. Oh, well, this is a grand frying pan, said George. Uh, just the job, 
I must try it out. Uh, would you like a spot of bacon, Pat? Uh, thanks, said Pat. Lovely. Mm, lovely jubbly. Bacon from a frying pan. Ah, it smells lovely. <laughs> so, he got a pan and there were no more strange parcels for a long time after that. The end. So that was Pat and the puzzle parcels. Can you remember all of those objects that looked exactly like a banjo, a frying pan? They all looked the same. The heater, the measurer, the frying pan. There was actually a frying pan at the end. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Oh, I don't have time to tell you the full story now, but boy, did we have a fun week that week. Pat and the puzzle parcels. Uh, that was good, wasn't it? What was your favourite object in there? Uh, did you have a favourite one? So that is how Storytime Live works. There are loads more stories here for you for to enjoy. For you to enjoy. Um, I'm going to go and put my teeth in because my sentences aren't making any sense. Do you understand? Does that make any sense to you? That I can't get my words out properly because my teeth have gone funny. So I'll see you tomorrow at uh, 6.30. Again, for some more story time live. Uh, that was a dedication to Leo in North Carolina. Oh, Leo in North Carolina. USA, USA. See you tomorrow. USA. Who are you doing it, Leo? USA, USA. You must stop streaming. <laughs>